Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, right off the bat, sorry if you hear any background noise there, I've got an air conditioner going, it's like 34 degrees and I'm not doing this without an air conditioner. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are all staying cool. Um, so today we'll be tying a small little uh, emerger midge pattern. Uh, this is a take on Rick Takahashi's, uh, I think it's called the Goose by it midge, or merger. Um, I, it's a take on it because uh, I, I want this to float a little higher in the column than Rick's does. So uh, I've just changed it a little bit and you'll see. Um, so without further ado, <clears throat> in the vise right now we've got a Hens BL334 in a size 12. This is a heavier um, a wire, but it is a short shank, right? And that's what I want for this, and a wide gap. I'm going to be using some Zemperfly Nano Silk in black. I'm going to be using some Zemperfly um, 0.2 millimeter bright silver wire for the rib. And then I'm going to be using some, oh, where can you see that? Uh, Rightway Sports Square Post. So a little piece of foam square post. And I'm going to be using just a piece of Crystal Hackle. Right? <clears throat> Let's get her going. First things first, give my thread a bit of a wax. Start this up. I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the front there. And then in touching wraps, going to go all the way back to the where the barb would be. <clears throat> And I want to keep this fairly slim, so I'm going to be doing the spinning my flattening my thread often because I do want to keep this fairly thin. I don't want much of a, much of a profile here. I just want a real thin little body. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a piece of my wire. This is, like I said, it's a fairly simple pattern, but uh, it works really well, especially when the feed, fish are feeding just below the surface. So I'm just tying that in on my side of the hook shank, nice and tight, right back to where I, I stopped. And again, fl flatten out that thread all the way back up. Okay, once you're back up to about there, you want to leave a little bit of room there. <clears throat> Going to give it one full turn right at the back end. And then I'm going to open up. And I want about six to eight ribs here. Something like that. I want some of that. I know that uh, it's always a controversy how many ribs a coronum it has and all that stuff, but it's more than more than anything it's just I want that shine more than anything so for this pattern <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna helicopter off it's gonna make sure something here I had a finished yes I have a finished one so I'll show you why because now I'm what I normally do is I'll tie them to this point about eight or ten of them or twelve of them to this point I'll nip it off and I'll give it a UV coating, okay? Oops. And this one's already been coated and dried. So there we go. It's got a little bit of a UV coating on it, that's all. Just a very minor UV coating, nothing nothing major. So, okay, nope, so just tie on my, my thread again. I'm gonna make sure I wax it again because I, I am gonna be going over top of that UV, so. Start it right at the eye, and just come back roughly to where you stopped with the rib. <clears throat> now I'm going to take the piece of the post, okay, and I'm going to tie this on right here. Just I just want a short little post. Again, flatten your thread so you don't cut this, cut your post here. And I'm doing loose wraps until I know I'm I'm good, and then I'll tighten up so I don't. Uh, cut that post this these these new threads the, the nano silks the gsps they, they, they have a tendency of wanting to cut because they're they're so thin and sharp right there you go which is kind of good kind of cut that off there you go right so okay now it's gonna, gonna just turn my 
hook in my vise just a little bit. I want it upwards just a bit. This makes it a little easier, I find. And I'm going to find a appropriate sized hackle. Fairly small is what I want here. I just want a really small guy, right? So, about like that, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to just peel this, gonna peel all the little fluff off of where I don't want. And then it's got a natural curve to it. I want to have that and a shiny side. So I want the shiny side facing me. I'm going to tie that on an angle like that. Back down to the eye, fold that stem over if you can, and tie that down. So now that, that stem is locked right in. You can see that I've got that stem locked right in there, right? A little piece there that I'm going to cut out. Okay, then carefully just kind of break that you want to break that uh, that center a bit so you don't so when it goes around it doesn't uh, doesn't break off on you and now I'm just gonna try to go around and, and stroke this stuff back as much as I can I want about five six wraps here at least if I can depending on how much room I've left myself at the head through that, that hackle fiber so you try not to trap as, as few as possible. Stroke it all back and build a little bit of a head. Not a huge head, just a little bit. And then just a small whip finish here. You can put some uh, Sally Hansons or whatever, whatever uh, head cement you like on the thread before you do that, but. And then you can just give this a tug off. And there is your finished fly. Now I will, I will later on, I'll put a little head cement on there, but uh, <clears throat> just for you guys to see, that is the finished fly. I'll just brush out all those little fibers just to make sure I got nothing trapped. If you've got something trapped in the eye or whatever, you can always hit it with a lighter or whatever, right? Just make sure there's nothing in there, which there isn't because I didn't use anything. So, But that is it. That's the, the finished little emerger. Simple little pattern, super effective. The hackle will help help it sit in that that, that slime and so will the, uh, um, in the slime, in the, in the, the water film. And then the, uh, the the parachute post there will help it float just a little bit, and the rest of this fly will just sit just below the surface. It, it can be a deadly pattern. When you see them sipping on the surface and there is a hatch going on, try these. They, they work really well. Um, I tie them in, in several different colors. I'll tie them in, in a green body, a black body. This one has done really well for me. This one here is kind of a gun metal with a little bit of an orange rib or a gun metal with a silver rib works really well it's it's uh, it's done it's produced really well for me um, but yeah probably these two and, a, and an olive green are the three that produce the best for me so alrighty hope you enjoyed that if you did give her a thumbs up if you subscribed thank you very much if you haven't please consider doing so and smash that notification bell so you don't miss any further videos and leave me some comments guys uh, let me let me know what you guys want to want to see uh, if there's any patterns you want to see in specific, or if there's a, if you want me to concentrate more on lakes, more on rivers, uh, more on nymphs, more on dries, just let me know. All right, tight lines, everyone. <laughs>